If you were on Drag Race, would you ever would you ever bring like an album afterwards? I always say that like I I can't <laughs> sing, I can't dance, but you know what? If Manila Luzon can do it, I can do it. So. <laughs> hey everyone, it's Mira Mangle. And I'm Blue Hydrangea. And welcome to another Mangled Morning. Ooh, cheers. Cheers. Chin chin. <laughs> Baby Blue, how are you? <laughs> I'm good, thank you. Thank you so much for having me. This is so fun. I watch you all the time. I'm obsessed. We love a mirror mangled Monday on, on this show, you know? Oh, wait, what am I talking about? <laughs> <laughs> I'm your big fans anyway. That's what I'm trying to say. <laughs> thank you so much. That's that's so awesome. And thank you for doing this. Like, you don't have to do this. But you're here and it's happening. So thank you so much. Of course. Yeah. I saw Envy Peru uh, do it and, and she's like such a fabulous, lovely person that I thought, I'm a fabulous, lovely person. I have to be on here too. Yes. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, oh, she, she is like, Envy Peru looks like, like, how does her skin look like that? Her skin know, oh my just looks so oh delicious, just beautiful. Uh, yeah, our oh, drag as well, just equally as delicious. Yeah, I. In fact, just the whole drag race hall and cast is like I'm, I'm a thirsty bitch for all. Of oh them. my god, yeah, they <laughs> li literally like one like from beginning to end, one of the most beautiful casts, right? Like just so hot, I know. so hot. Uh, but we're not here to talk about them. Today we are here to talk mm -hmm. about Blue Hydrangea and the Frock Destroyers releasing a brand new album which is insane. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Before we get started, make sure you go ahead and hit that subscribe button, like the video, and join the Patreon where you can see all kinds of additional content you can't see on YouTube. Plus you're helping support the channel. Where did this album come from? Like how, who, who came up with this and what, how did this get started? Well, it was World of Wonder approached the three of us. It was after DragCon UK. World of Wonder approached us because they saw how much of an amazing reaction we got on the main stage of the of the uh, convention. I think there was like eight to 10,000 people just there watching us, which was insane. Even my family that were there, they didn't realize the scope of this one song that we, right. we had uh, in, that was a part of the competition. And they approached us with Leland, who has written amazing songs. He works with Troy Zavan, uh, Selena Gomez. He wrote uh, Kitty Girls. Mm. And he also did Kardashian the Ruskal, which is like one of the best. And he wrote the original Break Up Bye Bye. Um, and with, they came to us and we were like, we can't say no to this. This right. is going to be epic. We're going to be iconic. And save 2020 well we didn't know it at the time but who knew we were going to save 2020 right right so you guys have been working on this because what dragon uk was last fall it was like january this year so um, oh okay it has been pretty a pretty quick turnaround for an album but um we we looked at like when we first heard her majesty like the first um basic version of it and it was like june and that feels like so long ago now. right that's like back in the first lockdown time is so crazy time is like uh, like molasses now like so slow. <laughs> so did World of Wonder literally like make a uh, like a record company for you guys? Cause it's like a brand new thing, right? World of <laughs> Wonder Records. Well, that's like, we didn't know about World of Wonder Records until like it, it all was released mm -hmm. and they made this Instagram, this, that, the other. But I suppose they did. And what a great opportunity because there's a lot of girls in Drag Race that want to make music and don't maybe have the means or the support. But World of Wonder have been a great support to us. They've been, they've kind of held our hand the whole way. So, um, Good for them. I mean, make your money, honey, and also allow Drag Race Girls of the future to make music, which is what most of them want to do. Not all of them are good at it, but I mean, with World of Wonder behind them, it'll, it'll be an extra little push. Right. right. I mean, yeah, it's it's kind of crazy that when when they released that, the, I just, you know, the picture of the logo, I'm like, how have they never done this? It's, it's just crazy after all this time know. and how big everything's gotten. Uh, but it took it took the Frock Destroyers. Can you sing? If you were on Drag Race, would you ever, would you ever bring like an album afterwards? I always say that like, I, I can't <laughs> sing, I can't dance, but you know what? If Manila Luzon can do it, I can do it. So. <laughs> oh my it, gosh. I know. We all remember her, um, what was it? Um, with the uh, Stacey Lee Matthews. If you were, da -na -na. Uh, if you like, yeah. Yeah. yeah, I can, if. Oh yeah, if you fail, get that's back That's what it was, down. yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, if Manila can sing, I can <laughs> sing. It's, first of all, what's really crazy is if you think about the Frock Destroyers, you're literally the first three to walk into the workroom and you walk in in order. Is that not crazy? That's so funny, yeah. We didn't know about that until like we saw a GIF like after. I feel like a lot of things um, when we watched the season back, it just like happened by chance. And it's, um, it's so amazing because the three of us worked together so well. And it was like due to, it was like not, meant to happen that we were even together. Crystal had yeah. the choice. She didn't pick us. We were the leftovers. 
And we get on so, so well. I absolutely adore Davina. She will look out for you uh, and, and be your mama through everything. She'll hold your hand, she, but she'll also have a nervous breakdown <laughs> and then you'll have to be her mama. Uh, and then there's Baggett, who's a hot mess and just a bundle of joy to work with and, and you can't help but laugh at her when she's just sitting there um, with her belly out and uh, no heels on, her wig's like, ha like lopsided. You just can't la help but laugh at her. She's just a ray of... Uh, fun and sunshine. I love in her. Um, God Shave the Queen, and I think it's in the first episode when she's going on and on about, oh, I just have so much work and da 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 da. You guys are like walking on the street and your face <laughs> is just like, mm. it's so funny. She's she's a yeah. nut. She's so, yeah. She, it's so funny because I feel like with God Shave the Queens, it's like um, that little insight into like Baggis humor behind mm -hmm. the scenes. Um, and I feel like so, it's rubbed some people up the wrong way, especially in the UK, who thought she was like this little like innocent like i don't know she, but she puts on this persona that she's like princess diana and she's like the people's right. princess and she's so successful she's so rich when really she like lives in a council flat she like smokes 50 cigarettes a day you know but um i feel like people don't get her humor quite quite as much when she isn't in full drag if that makes sense yeah you know what I, I mean? well i could see that but that's ridiculous like you can tell it's all but i think it's hilarious i do too I know that i know her yeah at first, I was like, oh god, she, she really thinks she is something, but now that I know her, I know that she's just taking the piss, you know? Yeah. Well, I remember, <laughs> so that first episode, when she, because she's the first one to walk in, and you get to hear her confessionals and everything, and you're, like, she is so British that I was like, at first, like, <laughs> you know, it's kind of one of those things where it takes a little while for certain accents where, you're like, you warm up to them, and then you can start to fully understand everything yeah. they're saying. But when she first walked in, I was like, are we going to be able to understand any of these girls? And luckily, it was just her, but, you know. Because she is just like thick accent, using all of the like local yeah. phrases that you're like, I don't know what the hell she's saying, but oh. she's an acquired taste. Oh, I but love she, her. And she's also a lot. But to me, I felt the same as you because I'm not around these accents like 24 seven. So right. I, I even find it hard to like understand people like Baga. Or I think um who else? Dravina. Yeah, she has a really strong accent. And Vivian, the top three. Yeah, they have probably the strongest accent of the whole season. And so any Americans out there who couldn't understand it were f***ed, right? <laughs> I don't think it will, oh, and it was like... <laughs> Yeah, I can, I can bleep you. It's fine. Like you mentioned, Crystal doesn't pick you guys, and you guys are just stuck together. At that point in the competition, how did you fit? Like, is this something that you thought you were going to succeed at? At that point in the competition, I felt like a, very much an underdog, and anything that I went into, I kind of had like a bit of a... You know, like I just didn't have like my full energy going into it because I felt like there were so many girls that were more talented at this bag of things every single night on right. like doing cabaret. Davina is the same, Vivian. Cheryl is like a performer. Mm -hmm. um, and being in a group with Baga and Davina, I thought, oh my God, I'm so screwed. <laughs> like uh, Baga in particular is a freaking hot mess to work with, even now, but, <laughs> but we're not in a competition setting, so it's a wee bit easier to put up with. Um, <laughs> I thought we're screwed. We're gonna be. Uh, they're gonna be sitting over there. Vivian can, cannot lose a challenge, and um, so we're gonna be in the bottom three. Luckily, that didn't happen. And whenever we were on the stage, I actually, because we went second, we got to see how much of a car crash theirs was. <laughs> no offense. <laughs> we were like, this is gonna be epic. Like once this goes out, I wonder will this song like explode? And then it did. We were like, this is great. This is exactly what we felt because we put so much effort in. After the, sh the filming ended, we were able to like stick around for as long as we want and rehearse. And uh, we put hours and hours and hours into it, and, and I'm so glad it paid off. Nice. Did you, when writing the lyrics, did you guys work together or separate, or how did that work? Um, no, we were given this iPod with a song on it, and uh, uh, we were given the lyrics uh, like the, of the courses, and, and this was the day before, and they said, go home and write something in case you make it through the next episode. Uh, and and we wrote, me and Davina wrote uh, our lyrics, and Baga wrote hers in 10 minutes before he went wow. to this, this set, so. <laughs> but Baga's is the best it's verse. Like I, I mean, mean you can't, I can't, I have to say it. It's iconic. It's super iconic. And as you mentioned in uh, Her Majesty, you've come a long way from rhyming home with home. <laughs> well, that was my, because <laughs> we had so much time to write them this time. I really wanted to reference as much of my Drag Race journey as possible. Uh, so, yeah, I had, yeah I, it was really fun. I, I wanted to have as much fun with it. The other songs we get to, be, we, we still get to be camp, but it's less about us. You know, like, 
with Drag Race mm -hmm. songs, it's very like, I'm blue, I'm here to do this, that, and the other. Whereas with the rest of the album, we wanted to kind of like leave that behind and just have fun and make fun of British drag and, and you know, it not be so much about us, but, but our journey in drag and, and the things around us, if that makes sense. There's more poppy songs that are like true, like, they don't have the word slag in them, you know, like they'll make it to, they'll hopefully make it on the radio. Uh -huh. uh, and then there's other songs where we get to be camp and fun again. Some of my favourite ones um, are like, Fame Wars, amazing. It's my favourite, I think, um, because we all have a great little moment on it. Uh, and what else? Good Frog for Life is good, isn't it? Because it's like a Spice Girls-esque like song. Where's the Lighting is also amazing. I have a feeling that it's like my song. Because um, it's quite, it's a bit lower in, in tune, like Baga and Davina, they can hit the higher notes, but in, like, I can't, I can't even force myself, I don't know why, because I sound so effeminate, I should be able to hit these, like, <laughs> hit these high notes, but, um, so that's my little song where I get to sing on the chorus, mostly, and, um, and Big Ben is, like, the, the gay club bop that you're going to hear in all the gay saunas and stuff, have you, do you have gay saunas in, in U.S.? I think there are some bathhouses. Is that yeah, they called? have bathhouses here. <laughs> um, I've never, I've never been to a bathhouse. It's Baga's favorite, and I think it's Davina's favorite. It's not my favorite because I think I'm more into like Spice Girls and yeah. stuff, and the other songs just are more that you know. I love that. Yeah, I mean, I was a, a massive, massive Spice Girl fan as a kid. I mean, I was, I was the perfect age for that because I'm a bit older than you. Um, yeah, it uh, was. It, oh. You don't look it. Thank you. I mean, it was literally like, I. it was the biggest phenomenon I've ever experienced was the Spice Girls as a kid. It was insane. I love your t-shirt. Love it. Yeah. Got our this is a, merch on today. Yeah. Oh yeah. Show it. This is like the brand new merch, right? Yeah. It has, it says Frog Destroyers on the arm. Beautiful logo. And then it said it has the logo on the back. I don't know if you can see that. Yeah. Gorgeous. It does look cute. And then what about your, what about, <laughs> since we're doing that, like, do you want to go ahead and just show us your underwear and... Yeah, sure. <laughs> um, <laughs> Let's get the dick on. Right. Yay. Save that for the after show. Uh, oh, that's on uh, Patreon, right? Oh, right. That's all They'll for Patreon. For that. We're looking at touring with the Frog Destroyers. Yes, fingers crossed. We're doing a documentary as well about the Frog Destroyers. And uh, hopefully we'll get to go on a tour. We've been told maybe potentially worldwide. I suppose it depends on how the world right. is at that time. What the state of it is. So fingers crossed. We might even get to meet. Oh, we're, if we're, on oh, tour. we're gonna meet, yeah. So hopefully in January when things are, well, in the UK there's a like another lockdown and then there's a tier system, which means different parts of the country are in different uh, lockdowns. Mm -hmm. So hopefully by January, it'll be in a better, we'll be in a better position to um, hopefully record our third, our second music video for the third uh, single. <laughs> nice. With a lot of numbers. The, so, <laughs> you mentioned the documentary. What's that? What does that entail? Like, what's that? What's that look like? It's basically just been following us around from the recording to the um, music video, uh, and and how we've all been able to do this through the lockdown and uh, through the pandemic. It's um, a mixture of both like us recording ourselves and 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 cameras as well, and it's really fun so far. Uh, as I say, I love working with the girls, so any any opportunity to be in the same room as them, just having fun, is, is always a good time. Yeah. So what was, so the in terms of like putting together this album and, and writing it, what was a lot of that done together or did you have to do a lot of that separately? It was quite a lot separately. Thankfully Leland is amazing, so he would write the core, like a rough course, and he would um, send us the song with our bits, kind of how we did Break Up Bye Bye. Mm -hmm. So with Her Majesty it was very like, okay, we'll just talk about being royal. <laughs> yeah, and then we went off with our lyrics, sent them back to Leland, and he would um, just tweak them. Although I must admit, me and my boyfriend, we, um, especially with Her Majesty, we had a lot of fun with those lyrics. It, um, I, I, we sent through, I've been called a little bitch, I've been called a little slag, and Davina and Baga thought it was too, too much. They were like, no, this is too camp, this will never be on the radio. But it somehow made it to the final thing, so I'm super happy with that, and I'm like, yay, I'm a little bitch, and I'm a little slag, and it's just the perfect lyric for me. <laughs> That's awesome. That's so awesome. The fact that you guys get on the charts is insane. You know what I mean? Like, in the US, the drag race, like, drag music does not make it to the charts, period. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, it's a big deal. I remember last year, whenever Breakup Bye Bye was in the charts, um, I was driving home, and um, I think we got to, like, 
It was like in the official, the whole of the UK charts, not just the iTunes. I think it was like top 20, which is crazy. Yeah. And then on the iTunes charts, we were only be beaten by a Dua Lipa, Don't Start Now. So I mean, pretty iconic song. It's hard to beat, you know? Has there been any talk about having international queens on All Stars? I like any know. like anything serious now that you're with the record label you should know something it's kind of always been nodded to us but like we don't know in what capacity i would love to be on all stars to be honest um, and yeah. I, I would love to be able to compete against the u.s queens just to i feel like when, when like they're always re remembered and revered in it across the world whereas i feel like I see so many things like that we're left out of or, or this, that, the other. And I feel like I'm so proud of our season, like the girls killed it and um, I feel like we should be equally as, as memorable. So putting us in that environment would immediately yeah. give us a, the platform that we kind of deserve. I'm not saying me, but like in general, I feel like right. we're an amazing cast, you know, so. And, and see oh, Poland it's... and, and Tha Thailand and um, God, there's so many, Canada. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, you know how I feel about it. It is, I, I literally think that it is, and I've said this, and I've, made, I've literally made videos about it. It is the best first season of any franchise, hands down, period. Regular US, All-Stars, anything. I mean, it is the best first season ever. Oh it really is. Thanks. I feel like it was so different to the American season because we were able to um, just like show off British drag and it doesn't take itself so seriously. We don't walk into the workroom and go, yeah. I'm fierce and I've got all these crowns and I'm going to win. We go, oh, I'm a slag and I, right. I'm a dirty bitch and look at me. Oh, oh I haven't showered today. Yay. You know. <laughs> For season two of UK, I feel like that's going to be, I'm sure it's going to be amazing. But it's gonna be hard for another season to match the heart that you guys had. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much. I really appreciate that. I mean, you look Irish with your little ginger hair. Maybe you could come over and pretend you're Irish and be in, on Drag Race season three of the UK version. <laughs> <laughs> well, my background is like all um, Irish and English. There's, oh, there there's nothing. There that's in fact, you like, can really tell. You know, when, whereas most people, Americans, when they say that to me, I'm like, yeah, sure, Dan. <laughs> whereas with you, I can really tell. My boy last name is like a straight up English last name. Like, Oh, there you go. I'll tell you later. Oh yeah, sure. It's so crazy for, for me, being such a huge fan of your season and the show, for you to say like, you don't feel like you're, like maybe the UK season isn't as included, but like you guys are doing bigger stuff than anyone. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Like you guys are massive. So I, you know, I know that a lot of that success is there, but yeah. oh, it's just, it's the fact that you're able to make such a huge impact in your country is, Astounded. It's so crazy. I, I just, I, I, as I said, you, like I've told you before we started filming that I just absolutely love Drag Race. Uh, so to keep on getting opportunities from like World of Wonder is like, it's like a godsend. Like I'm so thankful for it. I mean, uh, I like, I don't know if I did anything extra special on the show. I tried my best and I kind of uh, was a hot mess, like very nervous and rickety. But I'm so glad that I had this Frog Storage moment because without it, like, I don't know if I'd have like this bigger career post show. I'd definitely be able to do my looks, but all my touring and stuff has all been frock stories. So I'm so thankful for that moment. And I'm so glad that World of Wonder have picked up on it and allowed me to have like a second wave of, of their generosity. So I'm very thankful. It's the first mega group not involving Willow. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like that it's, it's huge. It's, it's yeah, huge. Yeah, well, my favorite challenges are always like the musical challenges, like musicals and, um, they did the, that Kitty Girls um, mm -hmm. All Stars episode where they were in two. And I'm that bitch. They're all so good. Yeah. Um, I, yeah, it is crazy to think that I was part of something like that. As I say, I don't. I can't sing. I actually can't sing. I remember my mom whenever I was younger. She used to think I was really good at Sing Star. Do you have Sing Star in the US? Sing Star? No, I don't know what that is. Like karaoke. And she was like, Oh my gosh, you're so good at this. You're gonna be a mega star whenever you're older. And then my balls dropped, and my voice didn't drop that much, but my singing voice was gone um so i hold on wait I, to we have to that's an exclusive i have to make sure i'm gonna put a headline blues balls did drop so that is an exclusive for the channel thank you they so much did for in that. Fact drop they yep. are in fact dangling oh. <laughs> currently sitting on this chair because i'm yes. not wearing any underwear um <laughs> please keep describing your balls to us <laughs> <laughs> i love it we love a thirsty queen. I can't sing, so I didn't expect to be able to sing on an album. Or, uh, this is just all crazy to me. I didn't even think that I would do that well post-show, so I'm just glad to be here, to be honest. We've been watching it for a, like a long time. I remember whenever we were writing the songs and stuff, you'd be on, you'd be on our little screen. For real? Yeah, totally. It's just like such good things, like 
to have on in the background while, like while you're doing stuff because it's like just someone talking it's like very nice and like therapeutic that's awesome that's so cool <laughs> yeah well that's gonna wrap up our conversation on the frog destroyers i think is there anything else you want to let us know about the album oh my gosh well you better let me listen to it because we put in so much work and it's great i'm super proud of it and i'm super proud of the girls thank you for even giving me this platform to chat to to you about it but yeah i'm gonna break up bye bye <laughs> 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 and we are so glad you got to see us. us. Bye. Yay. Bye. <laughs>